everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between, including freehand, which we've been doing for a few weeks now. And this is part 105, how to freehand an Imperial Fists symbol. This is actually quite a difficult symbol to do, but we'll, it's, we'll do it in many parts over this tutorial. So we'll be painting a, an Imperial Fist symbol on this sergeant, obviously belonging to Imperial Fists. He's yellow and red and makes sense. So we'll start off using white scar, and as always, I'll thin it down using a lamium medium. That way it's nice and thin. That way we can use it and it doesn't appear too chalky or go into clumpy. And we'll start off by making the circle. Now this is the important part. So what I like to do with making a circle is start with just a point in the center of the shoulder pad, and then work my way around it by just increasing this, the radius in every direction. Feel free to make the circle slightly larger than you'll need it. Uh, that's okay, we can clean that up easily afterwards. It's better to be too large than too small in this particular case. So as you can see, I'm just adding, and I'm gonna increase the radius just a layer at a time. And we're gonna do two nice thin coats of white scar in this case, because that way it goes on nice and solid, but doesn't go on too chalky, and is able to cover up over the yellow, because uh, white over pretty much any color can be a challenge. So as you can see now, we've got a circle going approximate the correct radius of the symbol. And what you're going to notice today is basically for this tutorial, for a complicated symbol like an Imperial Fist symbol, I'm going to be using black to paint it and white to clean it up. And that's frequently it. Uh, it's better if you can do it without cleaning up, but with a small symbol like this, you'll need to clean up sometimes. So we'll take some Abaddon Black once again and thin it down with Lamia Medium. And this part is now going to be the the, um, the circle itself. So we're going to do a black trace around the circle. And I'm going to go a little bit inside from the white. Because I noticed that, I, like, as I suggested, I went a little bit too large. And so what I'm going to do is create a circle by practicing. Obviously, it's, imper it's impossible to create a perfect circle. But once again, we'll just, by starting by creating the skeleton of the circle and then filling it in accordingly to make it a much cleaner circle than it was at the beginning. So we'll start with just a thin line going around the circle. And then we'll just fill it in accordingly. So this first part is kind of like how to create a circle. And as you see, I'm just going to finish up the, uh, the circle itself. And there we go. And I'll fill it in accordingly to make it a nice, more even circle. And that's what we have. So as you see, I just filled it in and then cleaned it up slightly with some white. So next I'll just take some white scar and, and clean up a little bit on the inside to make it, again, closer to perfect circle. Much more even circle. And once we've got our circle complete, uh, we have a little bit of white around the, the edge of the black. So then we'll clean up that next with yellow. So we're gonna take some Eero yellow. And because it's the mid-tone yellow, as always, I use the mid-tone to clean up around the edges of the symbol. Because that way when it interacts with a white, it still looks good and has a good border to it. And I'll just thin it down once again with Lemmy Medium and clean up the edges of the circle. So this first step after this is complete of doing the symbol. We've gotten the circle that we're going to put the symbol in. It's kind of a two-step process. See, I'm just carefully taking my time, going along the edges of the circle, doing it nice, and cutting it in. So now we're going to take our Abaddon Black, and we're going to break up the symbol into many parts, as I normally do. So the first part we're going to do is the very bottom of, this, of the Imperial Fist symbol, which is basically the, the, the gauntlet part, the part below the wrist. So we'll start off by creating three triangles, essentially, in three different, you know, it, it's basically a flat top with three edges, one pointing down one, and two pointing about 45 degree angles. So we'll start by creating that on the very bottom part of the symbol sec section. Once again, I'm just starting by creating the frame and then filling it in accordingly, a little bit at a time, nice careful brush strokes with my thinned down Abaddon Black. 
Using a wet palette is awesome in this case because then you don't have to worry about the paint drying while painting it. And that's it for the first part. And then I'm just going to make sure it's nice and clean. And then once again, I'll go back with my white, clean it up, make sure it's nice and sharp. And then that once that part is done, we'll leave it there and then work on the next part of the symbol. We're just going to break it up into many pieces. So we got our bottom part done. And I'm going to go just go clean up with a little bit of white. And I shortened it up a little bit. I realized it was going too high up on the symbol. So now we have our bottom part of our symbol. As you can see, it's nice and clean, has a nice sharp edge on the top. So next, we're going to start off at the next part, the part just below the thumb, by creating a triangle that goes a little bit higher than where we're going. But the key is it's supposed to go along most of the length of the, of the wrist part. And we're going to leave a little bit of a gap because there's a small white line between the bottom part where we just worked on and this part. So, so now we're working on the part, uh, it, it's basically the part beside the thumb. So once again, doing a little bit of a triangle, pushing it, the pigments slightly towards the area. And that's it. So we got the next part done. Once again, then I'll go back, take some white, make it a little bit sharper, and then leave it. I'm just going to make sure it's nice and clean along the same length. I know it's hard to imagine this point, but it will look like the symbol when it's done. So now that that's done, and it's cleaned up, we're going to do the thumb. So the thumb is just basically a bent thumb, so it goes up at about a 45 degree angle and then it bends to be uh, parallel to the, the white line that we created earlier, and goes slightly over the triangle that we just worked on. As again, this is a symbol where it's going to be hard to imagine until it's kind of done because all the pieces of the of the free hand. So once again, making the thumb, making it nice and thin, and then we'll go over with some white and clean it up. Now it's obviously optimal if you don't have to clean it up, but uh, even with my free handing abilities, which I'm obviously not the best, but uh, even with my abilities, it's always good to have a clean up color and just make sure it's nice and sharp. And that's what I like to do: break up these symbols into multiple pieces and clean them up one part at a time, work on the next, and then once it's done, work on the next one. That way you can keep it nice and sharp. Rather than doing a, one giant clump and then having to fix it all up afterwards, which can get really messy really quickly. So next we're going to take our Abaddon Black once again, and this is our final step of really the, the hand, and then we'll just clean it up for a bit. We're going to do the four dots um, evenly spaced over the top of the hand, and each dot represents a finger. The farthest one to the right, in this case, the very first one that I did, will be all the way down, so it'll be more of an oval shape, and then the other ones will be circles. And as you can see there, that's basically the hand shape. Now we're just gonna take our white again and clean it up a little bit and then fix it and just make sure the nice and sharp circles. So as you see, I'm just building up my circles, and the one to the farthest to the left is, is more of an oval because it's going down slightly to be, uh, it'll end, at basically the same level as the uh, as the thumb. So I'm going to take my white once again and slightly clean it up and separate those dots. I went a little bit too large with my circles, so just a little bit along the edges of them will clean that right up. Once again, the key is just take your time and to make sure every step is nice and clean. And then we'll take our rabbit on black once again and just make sure that they're nice and sharp. That's a lot of what I find freehand to be, is just going back and forth with a couple colors to clean up and then uh, to make sure that they're nice and even. And that way you get the symbol that you want. And as I said, this is more of a complex symbol than we've done in the past, but it's not too crazy. And that's it. So then we're just gonna take our white once again, clean up the edges, make it nice and thin. Now we have a symbol, definitely definitely showing the fist for an imperial fist. And after that's up done, we're good to go. And I just repeat this process a couple more times, and look at that. We are we have a nice finished imperial fist fist symbol. Uh, the first step obviously is to create the circle, do the black around the circle, clean it up, and then do the fist inside the circle. And then you're in good shape. And that's a good Imperial Fist freehand symbol. And you obviously can apply this technique to multiple places, clean it up, uh, break it up into multiple symbols, and then clean it up. 
So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. And stay tuned for part 106, which is just around the corner. Next week as always, but if you don't want to wait for next week, check out the warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel. We're not only going to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes before anyone else, you get to see over a hundred start to finish painting tutorials, dozens of battle reports and face-off episodes, an Airbrush 101 series, just tons of wargaming content. I know you're going to love it. So stay tuned for more episodes. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.